Welcome to worship. Uh, tonight we continue with our series in view of God's mercy. Again, what we're doing with that, we're looking at different Lenten themes, uh, Lenten symbols that point us to God's mercy in Christ. When I walked over here, is it still cold? Some of you are like, yeah. Some of you are like, yeah, not too bad. I felt it was cold all day. But as I walked over here, it was kind of wintry. And there was like kind of, I know they're talking about ice and snow tonight and tomorrow. And I was kind of feeling some of it even when I came over here earlier. And I got to thinking, you know, that's kind of appropriate with the time of year that we're in. So we've talked about this with the season of Advent, but it's also true with Lent that the beginning of the season, we're still in kind of winter mode. And so there's chances of snow and ice, and it gets cold, and the sun still sets pretty early, but the clouds tonight it set earlier than it has been. And with that, I'm reminded I'm waiting for something better, right? And by the end of Lent, when we get to Holy Week and Easter, God willing, it's a lot more spring-like, right? It gets warmer. The days will certainly be longer starting this Sunday. By the way, don't forget, set your clocks, because the sun will be out an hour later starting this Sunday. Um, But we get longer days, warmer weather, and hopefully things start to grow, and a reminder that good things are coming. So by the end of this season, we find ourselves enjoying the new life of spring as we celebrate the new life that we have in Christ. So I thought, how appropriate today that it's a little more dreary and cold as we're still in that season of Lent, reminded of our sin, reminded of the reality of sin and death, but that we have good things to look forward to. We look forward to the life that we have in Christ. With that, let's go ahead and rise. We get started by rising, turning to one another, sharing God's peace.
begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God in my exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Turn to the altar and confess our sins. Oh, Almighty God, God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of your holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being, do you believe that the forgiveness that I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve. Turn now to our readings, and tonight's first reading comes from the book of Numbers. It's be chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Hor, God's people set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who has bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We turn now to 1 Peter. And here's chapter 2, yep, beginning with verse 21. Here Peter writes, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we rise for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 8th chapter, beginning with the 14th verse. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with a fever. Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she rose and began to serve him. That evening they brought to Jesus many who were oppressed by demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. We'll now sing our sermon hymn. <laughs>
pray with me? Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations, may the thoughts of all of our hearts, all of our minds be pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay, so tonight's Lenten theme is suffering. And of all the topics, all the themes that we're going to talk about throughout the series, this is probably the most uncomfortable for us because no one wants to suffer. And yet, we learn tonight that even as we suffer, we experience God's mercy in our lives. And in fact, it's through suffering that we receive God's mercy through Jesus' suffering and death on the cross. We're going to look specifically at our reading from Numbers tonight. And we said we have an uncomfortable topic. In Numbers, we have an uncomfortable image, an uncomfortable scene. We have God's people... And here you have millions of people laying all over the ground, crying out in pain, slowly dying of snake bites. And this image becomes even more uncomfortable when we realize that God is the one who sent the snakes. God is the one responsible for his people's suffering in this reading. Now, I can say right away, we cannot resolve the um, uncomfortable nature of this reading. We have to let God be God here. But, as uncomfortable as this reading in this image is, we do, as we take a closer look at it, we find God's mercy in the midst of it all. So, if we go to the beginning of this, this is before God sends the snakes. What are God's people doing? Yeah, some of you are mouthing it. It's the same thing they do all the time in the wilderness. They grumble and complain. Why did you bring us out of Egypt just to die out here in the wilderness? There's no food. There's no water. We loathe this worthless food. If you have a Bible and can look, and you can do this when you go home too, If you look at the verse just before this, God has just done something amazing for his people. He has just given them victory over a Canaanite king. So he's fought for his people. He's protected his people. He saved his people. He gave them whatever food and other resources were in the city that they just conquered. And in the very next verse, they get impatient and they complain. We're miserable. We're uncomfortable. We'd rather die than have to suffer out here. And understand this. The wilderness is not a comfortable experience. And are they suffering? Yeah, they've suffered. But not to the extent that they claim. Because what do they say? There's no food. There's no water. And that's not true. Water, food, they're scarce in the wilderness. But God's gone to great lengths to ensure they've always had plenty to eat, plenty to drink. And regarding food, he's been giving them this bread from heaven, right? Manna, each and every day. The problem isn't that they don't have food to eat. The problem is they're not satisfied with what God has given them. It's not good enough. That's why they say, we loathe this worthless food. So, are God's people in an uncomfortable situation? Yeah. Are they suffering? Yeah, but not to the extent that they claim to be suffering. They're kind of like, think about this. We have a lot of parents and grandparents here, so you've experienced this, I'm sure. Those whiny kids in the back seat of a car on a long road trip. Can you identify with this? I'm bored. I'm hungry. I'm tired. Are we there yet? And they sound like these whiny kids. And if we're honest with ourselves, we can sound that way too, right? And how often do we cry out that we're suffering? And maybe we are suffering. And maybe we're not. I'm not saying that we don't or won't experience true suffering in our lives. In fact, it's a guarantee we will. 
that sometimes we get this habit of viewing our circumstances as worse than they really are. Or maybe they are as bad as we see them to be, but we become so focused on our suffering that we can lose sight of God's mercy and the good that he has done and continues to do for us. As God's people are grumbling and complaining in the wilderness, they've lost sight of God's mercy and the good he's done for them just in the previous verse. And so God says, Okay, you want to know what real suffering is like? I'll show you. And he sends those snakes. Now, as he does this, understand, God is not doing this out of anger and spite. I think it was last Sunday, we talked a bit about tough love. This is tough love. Hard for us to understand, but God is doing this to teach his people to trust him. And so as the people are laying there dying of these snake bites, he shows them mercy He has Moses build this bronze serpent, put it up on a pole. And whoever looks up at the serpent on a pole will live. God shows mercy by giving them a serpent on a pole. God shows mercy by giving us a man on a pole, right? By giving us Jesus on the cross. We too have been bitten. We've been bitten by that ancient serpent, the devil, And he has injected his venom. He has injected sin into us. As a result, we are dying. But now we are called to look up to Jesus on the cross. So in our reading from 1 Peter, Peter says, oh, you will suffer. Two reasons for that. One is we live in a sinful world, and that's part of living in a sinful world. We'll suffer here. The other part of it is that we follow a Savior who suffers. And your life will often reflect the life of the one you follow. So Jesus suffers. We're called to suffer. Peter says that Jesus did nothing to deserve his suffering. He committed no sin. He never grumbled or complained against God. No deceit was found in his mouth. Instead, he chose to suffer. He willingly suffered, trusting his heavenly Father who sent him to suffer. And then, out of mercy, he took our sin upon himself, took it to the cross. Out of mercy, he took upon himself the suffering that we deserve. And now, as we look up, not to a snake on a pole, but to Jesus on the cross, that venom is removed. Our sins are forgiven, we're healed, and we live. So will you suffer in this life? Yeah, have you suffered? Maybe you're suffering now. And yet even as we suffer, we are called to look up to Jesus who suffers for us. And as we look up to Jesus, we're healed and we live. Now, that doesn't mean that you're going to be healed immediately of everything that you suffer from in this life. Maybe you're suffering with cancer or difficulties with finances, or maybe struggles in a relationship. And Jesus has not promised that all of that's just going to disappear here and now. Some of that might be healed in your lifetime. Some of it might not be. But you are healed. You're healed of your sin. And as one who has been healed of their sin, now you're destined to live, to live forever, eternally and a life free of suffering. So as you experience suffering in this life, may you also experience God's mercy as you look to Jesus. Amen. Let's rise. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our offering. And as we collect offering, there was some joy going on. Uh, children always bring us joy. And I just have to admit, even I was slightly distracted. And what I found so profound, what were we talking about? <laughs> suffering. That's a pretty heavy topic. But as we talked about suffering, we were surrounded by joy. And a reminder again, even when we suffer, we have joy because we have Jesus. Please rise for prayer. Almighty and merciful God, we approach your throne of grace today as those who struggle with hardships and suffer with pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we encounter the brokenness of this world and the suffering that it brings, restore us with your healing power so that we might rest secure in you as our mighty fortress. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. When we experience broken relationships and the suffering that these bring, restore us with your healing power so that we might seek reconciliation and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. When we experience broken bodies and the suffering that it brings, restore us with your healing power so that we might live in health once again. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our prayer. prayer. When we experience broken minds and the suffering that it brings, restore us with your healing power so that we might know of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. When we experience broken spirits and the suffering that it brings, restore us with your healing power so that we might have hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we encounter the death of loved ones and the sorrow that it brings, Restore us with your abiding comfort so that we might trust in your victory over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When we encounter our own death and the terror that it brings, restore us with your resurrection power so that we might live eternally in your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Now may the Lord be with you. May the Lord lift up his face, shine on you, and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. May be seated. We'll sing our final hymn.
announcements. Uh, first of all, I want to encourage you to join us for some food and fellowship after service. And if you checked out the serving counter, there's a lot of good goodies tonight. So I encourage you to join us for that. Um, let's see, we have our toilet paper collection has started, and I see a few packages out in the fellowship hall. Uh, that goes to support the Hamilton County Food Pantry, and we are collecting the toilet paper from now to the end of May. So I encourage you to bring those in. Uh, we will continue to have our Wednesday night services. And as I announced snack for tonight, uh, I think there's still one service that, that needs a sign-up, I think, when I looked at the sheet, uh, to bring snacks after service. So I encourage you to check that out. Uh, we will be... Oh, here, let's talk about that real quick again. What are you going to do Saturday night? That means move your clock ahead an hour. Don't go back. You'll be two hours late. Yeah, go ahead. This is the real fun one that everyone just loves, but will be filled with joy, right, even as we suffer because we have Jesus. So set your clock ahead. Yep, we got the sign project. We're about halfway, a little over halfway there for that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, Holy Week. Can you believe we're three weeks away now or something like that? So Palm Sunday, April 2nd, and then what day is that Thursday? Is that the 5th? What is it? 6th. So Monday, Thursday, the 6th, and then Good Friday, the 7th, and that will be at 7 p.m. The 6th, it's, uh, this is really easy, actually. Do not come at 2 a.m. on the 2nd. Forget that part. But on the 6th, 6 p.m. On the 7th, 7 p.m. And on the 9th? 9 a.m. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for that Holy Week. That's a cool thing. And we'll have the Easter brunch for that, and that's coming up. But what I want to talk a little bit about and let Sue ask uh, or mention some things is we are doing this year the Seder meal service again for Monday Thursday, and that involves food, and that involves help. So, Sue, I'll let you talk a little bit about that. Okay. So I did put a sign-up sheet out on the, the table for signing up for that. If we could have that complete by the Sunday before, so on Paul Sunday, I would like to have my final number. Um, there's a sign-up sheet. We sit you with families, and I need to know how many people in your family are over 21 and how many people are under 21. That goal will be with you because the service entails wine. So we want to make sure that we keep that. The under 21s will have a special drink. It won't be wine. That's so, right. and if anybody would like to help me, really, I think when I need the most help is like Thursday afternoon for seven. So, um, we will have it in here again, but we have the traditional Seder service food that needs to be plated, that needs to be at the place. So, we're getting everything the set up. Yeah, I think we'll set up for tables and stuff Sunday after church. I think we did that last time. Okay, Sunday. that sounds right. That sounds right. So, if anyone's interested in helping, just are there multiple sign-up sheets then? It's just one. Just one for participating? for participating? So there's none for like donating food or no. anything like that? We haven't done that previously. We've Church had that office. covered. Okay, perfect. I just didn't know what, what yeah. we needed. So, Okay, thank you. Um, do we have any other announcements? Anything else we need to know? Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.